everyone. Uh, everything just crashed there right when I went live. So had to start over on a new thing. It looks like it's working now. But yet a lot of you might be waiting over on the old one. So I apologize for that. But what I can maybe do is... Hey, everyone. Sorry about that. The other one crashed. Hey, oh, okay. Oh, people are coming in now. Sorry about that. Literally, I went live and then just the, the phone crashed. So, let me just make sure the other one's deleted. Just so people aren't confusing. There we go. All right, so I wanna talk about my favorite pentatonic exercise. Usually, uh, you know, when the live stream starts, I jam for a little bit uh, while people come in. I see a lot of people coming in now. Um, so this is my favorite pentatonic exer exercise, or at least one of them that's, that helped me a lot. Uh, now, when it comes to like lead guitar and stuff, one thing is that just fluidity, like your right hand is like a tambourine. So sometimes you just wanna practice just your right hand because all the feeling and rhythm is in the right hand. Right? So sometimes you just want to work on your rhythm. Now, when it comes to that lead guitar thing, there's that alternate picking, right? So one thing you want to do to start working on that alternate picking is just like on one string. So if I'm in the key of D, uh, I can be on the 12th fret of the D string. And just on that one string, work on your alternate picking. Maybe go a whole step down. Then you can add the G string. Uh, Kathleen says, isn't the pentatonic scale when you move up the neck? Uh, the pentatonic scale is a group of notes. You can go up and down the neck with it, or you can stay in one spot. Um, so that was the blues scale. So you can work on your alternate picking. Um, but here's the thing that comes along with that. Yeah, hey, Ozzy, sorry, my first attempt, my phone crashed. But now it looks like we're, everything's working. Um, okay, so something that we don't do a lot when we first start playing the pentatonic scale. I'm just going to do the, the D minor pentatonic scale right here. So 10th fret on the E string. 10, 13... 10, 12, 10, 12, 10, 12, Virginia, 10, <laughs> 10 13, 10, 13, thank you, Atomic, Ryder Burks, uh, I'm not playing death metal today, sorry, buddy, working on this pentatonic, one of my favorite pentatonic exercises, um, Paul, uh, Pauly, Pauly G. Brian, thank you, okay, so, well, the pentatonic is kind of the, the skeleton for so much stuff besides just playing. Let's see. All right. Where is the other glasses? <laughs> I'm looking for my other glasses, actually. They're lost somewhere in the house for me getting back from Colorado. Okay, so check this out. Uh, instead of just going down the scale, the next thing that I see the guitar players need to get out of is just going up and down the pentatonic. So the, the main thing is like this thing. where you're playing right next door on the same fret. So the first one I wanna show you, and this is the D minor pentatonic. Instead of just playing up and down, try this first. This isn't the exercise, but try this. 10th fret B string. 
and use the deeper part here of your finger, and then you roll to hit, hit the tip of your finger on the same fret G string like this. So it's not together, although that works, but it's this. And then you could hit the root on the 12th fret D. But so a lot of guitar players, when they're learning the pentatonic, they don't do the next door. And we could do it on each note of the scale, but just this one is a great starting point. Okay? So the other one I'll show you, because of that pentatonic, you can do the pinky on the 13th fret B, but then also to the 10th fret G. So you have two little things there. Watch this. That's the move where it's right next door. Okay. Uh, another one in there is the 12th fret G to D. Hey, Praetorian Guard. Excellent. And then right there, check that out. 10th fret G, D. something you can practice and it would be really great if you can do it with your alternate picking but just through that minor pentatonic I would be 13th fret high E to B so I'm doing that finger rollover technique then 10 high E B so do those together and then 13 on B to 12 on G then that 10 B G so you can start with those. Sounds like an exercise when I do that, but I'm working on my alternate picking. I'm also working on a technique that I don't, that no guitar player really starts with when they're learning that pentatonic scale. Now, there's a great like blues, classic blues lick where you do the uh, 10th fret B in high E. High E first, uh, E, B, E, B, E, B. So. The opposite. thing to practice for your technique but then you can also work its way into your improvising and your soloing because you got your regular up and down the scale but when you start to get some of those in there Richmond super chat thanks so much so that last one I did there check check out what I did see that so then you have just going up and down the scale blues note and then you've also got the extension right there uh, and that's all just in one spot um let's see Kathleen Fry, I've been in a lot of bands. That was the question if I've ever been in a band. Lincoln, hello. Uh, the Kinneys, yes, you get your shout out, the Kinneys. Uh, Lincoln, hello. 
Um, I've been in a ton of bands. Let's see, I think there's two two bands where my name's not like attached to it. Um, there's a band called Sidecar, and the album's called Subtle Yet Striking, but it's P S Y D E C A R. That was a band I was in in the early 2000s. Um, there's a band called Slightly Stupid. I'm going to be on their new album that's not out yet. I went into the studio and played a, a solo on on Slightly Stupid's new album, so I'm excited for that. Um, I've been in a bunch of bands starting in high school. All the way, really, I was playing in bands all the way up till this YouTube thing happened for me. But none of them were, like, super famous bands, so you haven't heard of them. I did some touring and stuff, and I also played guitar for singers in their bands as what's referred to as a sideman. Um, okay, so basically, take your pentatonic, you learn it, have some fun with it. But don't forget the, the, those next-door neighbor notes. See that? So that's like the 12th fret D to G. And then 10 G to 10 D. The other thing is all the other scales, the pentatonics underneath it. So here's the pentatonic. But I have all kinds of things I can add to it. So I'll start slow and then I will uh, put it uh, put it into use here a little bit. Let's just we'll lower that a little bit. Yes, everybody. Hello. Oh yeah, Brian couldn't make it today. I'm here by myself. Oh, and happy Father's Day, everyone that has one celebrates it, etc. <laughs> with the lots of next doors, which, you know, in most of the scale, that would be called fourths. Yeah, so oh, thanks for the shout outs on the Slightly Stupid. So whenever their new album ends up coming out, I don't think they know when it's coming out, but when their new album does come out, you're going to hear, uh, maybe you'll hear a fami some familiar soloing and, and you'll know it was me. You'll know it's me. When you hear it, I'm pretty sure you'll know it. So we'll be excited. I'll let you know when that comes out. Okay, so that same thing here. Well, I've been friends with Slightly Stupid for many years because of my San Diego uh, music scene that I was that I was in. Um, they're good. They're good buddies of mine. Uh, I've played with them before, actually. Anyway, here we go. Back to that. <laughs> Oh, 
and then also when it comes to this exercise and many other hours of exercises like this that will help you, I actually have a free pentatonic exercise course at martymusic.com, so you can check that out. martymusic.com, you can go to hit store. There's a link here in this video as well. Totally free, all these pentatonic exercises in a course. Here we go again. <laughs> just went to still the D minor pentatonic, but in the A root position. So D. Oh, that's cool. Uh, but check it out. I mostly was staying right here in the E root position, mostly pentatonic. The pentatonic's always going to be there, but then there's other colors around it that I can add. So if the pentatonic's right here. Um, it'd be more like Dorian just because of the groove I'm playing. The... But then you have to learn how to combine them together into the, you know, kind of flavors you want. So then you've got the D minor pentatonic right here, which is the fifth fret A string. With the blues note as well. Yeah, this will be archived afterwards. And also I've got the free pentatonic course Oh, Greg Levinson, yeah. Um, so this is in the key of D. Jam along for a second. Not Phrygian, though. It's not Phrygian. So this is a key, D minor pentatonic, D Dorian. You could do D mixolydian as well. It's kind of open-ended. Jam that, jam that, jam that. Right, 
No, I didn't quit. Um, let's see. Can you see that? Let's see. Well, Phrygian could be a, a position, but I don't... I don't, I mean, I did teach it that way many, many years ago, but I don't think of a position as Phrygian. I just think of the scale and the notes. So there is, you know, that's not what that, how I think of it, but however you can make good sounds is cool with me. So first time ever, you guys, and obviously this isn't a grand um, announcement yet. I've just kind of been teasing, but let's see. Yeah. South America, nice. Hernan Soto, Kenneth Pinion, coffee break, Michael Maru. Uh, the older I get, I may need to take a bathroom break. <laughs> but I'm bump, getting old. Uh, Josh Norco, and thanks for all the super chats. Thank you. The Holy Grail. Oh! Bum, 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 bum. Yeah, you know, this is a thing that I never, ever, it wasn't my goal. It wasn't something I ever imagined because I'm not a, uh, I wasn't an artist, you know, on that track. But because I've helped so many people uh, learn guitar and, and all of that, this was uh, a, an honor that was brought before me. So this wasn't something that I was like ever imagining in my life. But it certainly feels good, you know? It feels really good. So this is my not yet released signature ES335 from Epiphone. Yep. Here it is. Look at that. So Epiphone, very specifically because now it's an amazing guitar, right? And it plays amazing. And I'll be talking to more. And I'm going to do some st stupid lessons, but I'll be talking about this guitar more as it comes closer to being released. It is... Basically, just a super, you know, like you take a, a standard Epiphone ES-335, so not the Gibson, right? Um, which I love as well. But you take the, the you know, basically the nicest Epiphone ES-335 um, block inlays just exactly like my Gibson version. Um, also, locking tuners, which is great, especially when you're first learning or you get your first you know, upgraded guitar, the locking tuners. It makes restringing the guitar easier. Um, and I feel like it keeps it in tune better. But so it's got the locking tuners on the back. I didn't show it to you yet because the other thing is I didn't want it to just, basically I just tried to make the nicest like Epiphone 335 that I would want to play. And I made it red, just like mine, with the block inlays, just like mine. And by the way, the red is inspired by Marty McFly. In Back to the Future, the block inlays are uh, inspired by B.B. King. And then also, so many other legends have, have made, uh, you know, 335's amazing. But, check out the back, yeah. Look at that. So I didn't want it to necessarily be so, you know, since I'm not Slash, I didn't want it anywhere up front, like in your face, right? But with that, you know that it's, mine, and it's also the nicest Epiphone ES-335 I could put together with my specifications in red with the block inlays. And then also, um, because, you know, I'm teaching so many types of lessons, and this is a humbucker guitar, what my Gibson ES-335 does not have that this one has is the single coil push-pull on the pickups. Just that way you can get even more different sounds out of it. So it's uh, it's coming out very, very soon. So it's coming out in August. And, oh, yeah, I'll throw this out here as well. It's coming out 
It's coming out August 22nd. So there's going to be some great opportunities. Um, there's going to be some great opportunities to, to win a few. And also, uh, so August 22nd, the guitar comes out. But then leading into that, around that time, and then also about a week later. So I'm going to be doing a, an event. Hey, I'm going to be doing a, an event uh, at the Gibson Garage, you know, because it's Epiphone Gibson. So that'll be around the time August 22nd when the when the guitar comes out. Thank you for all the great comments, everyone. Um, like I said, I uh, it wasn't something that, you know, it's something that when you first start playing guitar and you're listening to your heroes, and especially before the internet, you're getting the guitar magazines and senior heroes, you know, it seems like something that is, a, you know, the ultimate fantasy, right? So to get it, I mean, honestly, when they made an ES-335 for me in the studio and then, and then gave it to me afterwards, that was, that was, a, that was amazing, you know, that was as good as I thought it would ever get, but it's still going. And the other thing that I didn't, uh, make a deal out of at all and what day what's the date today the 17th so so i think it was four days so four days ago four days ago was the seven year anniversary of marty music going live launching seven years you guys uh about four days ago and i'm having so much fun that i didn't even uh, realize it until a day later uh <laughs> Oh, another thing that, that that I really want, thank you guys. The other thing about the Marty Music Epiphone ES-335 is that, um, and I know actually at first I was just gonna have it come with a code for my free beginner electric guitar course, but then I realized a lot of you aren't beginners anymore because you've been watching me for years or, or whatever. So I just wanna make sure that when you guys get the guitar, you'll see that there'll be some kind of opportunity in there for you to get some uh, free courses from Marty Music. There's only a few hundred they're going to be made, so it shouldn't be that difficult for me to have me and my webmaster actually um, communicate with you about what free course you want or, or set up an automated system where you can, but when you get the guitar, you can boom, get something right away. Okay, so here's the uh, new guitar. Let's see what we got. <laughs> I haven't played one famous song in this stream yet, so I want to keep it that way. But I appreciate all your wonderful support. Um, I'm going to just keep teaching, you know. That's my main priority. Oh, yeah. And also, check this out. September 1st, I'm going to be doing a show in Nashville um, that's actually this killer venue called Analog that's at the top of a hotel Skyrise Hotel, looking over the city, a venue there. And so September 1st, I'm going to be doing my own show with a band, and it's to celebrate this guitar. And then also, um, uh, it's, you know, in this hotel. So if people were coming from out of town, you can actually stay at the hotel that I'm going to be doing a gig at. <laughs>
right. Thank you so much. Yeah, so this guitar will be available August 22nd. Epiphone, you'll, you'll learn more about it. You know, there's going to be some stuff. You know, I'll talk more about it. Um, okay. Yeah. So we're, we're wrapping up. So shout outs, uh, X cookies, X, uh, Greg Roberts. Thank you. Uh, violent port car, mighty vapor. Uh, there'll be exact prices. Uh, I think. So I don't want to say how much, cause I, I don't want to be wrong if I, I, I'm pretty sure how much it is, but anyway. You'll, you'll know soon. There's no announcements yet, so this is just teasing. Uh, Josh Norco, thanks so much. Uh, Ralph Mayer, thank you. Jeff Pekoski, Michael Marulo, thank you so much. Oh, don't forget about the, the free pentatonic course at martymusic.com, free pentatonic exercises. The one I featured today was one of many, many that are free on there at martymusic.com. Greg Levinson, thank you. Tom Crane, thank you. Tim Schwartz, what's up, Mr. Schwartz? Uh, Tim Black, Tobster, Julian Sander, River Rat Rich, JD, uh, Kipton Utkarsh, Whiskey Mike, what up? Uh, Manea Kemp, Manaya Kemp, uh, Eric Coffey, uh, yes, thank you so much, Dante, Kathy G, good to see you again, thank you so much for your continued support, uh, Ralph Mayer, you're trying to play the riff, turn me, turn me loose, uh, sup, fear, Johnny Powell, thin line telecaster with a regular telecaster, yeah, I don't have a thin line, but, um, that'd be a fun reason to get one, uh, Hey, Ja Isa Waganda, thank you. Frank Aponte, thank you so much. Appreciate all of you guys. Aaron Trimble, Sharabella Patrick. The guitar's not out yet, August 22nd, so nothing about it yet. Uh, thank you so much, Max MB, thank you. Alberto Fiestas, Manaya, uh, record him saying your name. Aw. Santos de Elba Sanchez. Uh, Sylvan. Compo, your boy. Gunpai, your boy. The, the letters are pretty small on my phone here, guys. Uh, Gunpai, your boy, yeah. RF from Rhino. Hello from Rhino. Ed C. Thank you for the nice comments. Happiness, love, positivity is always better. Oh, thank you, Kale ha Hale Built. Whiskey Mike, $10. Thank you. I was your first guitar teacher five years or so now. Yeah, seven years ago, Marty Music launched. And then uh, I've been going for a long time. Any tips for learning polyphia? Look up people that are into that style on YouTube that teach it, man. Because it's not me. But good luck. Uh, Muffin, Hey Ya Lesson. That's a great song to learn. You know, when I first started on YouTube, Hey Ya was like one of the most popular acoustic lessons. That's how long ago. And it was like a newish kind of song at the time. Also, I think I was doing lessons before Bruno Mars's first hit song, too. And I do remember Ed Sheeran didn't have any, he was a YouTube guy. He had a big song just from a YouTube video when I started. James McLaughlin, uh, Thunderstruck. I would do it the the cheater kind of way, um, which is like the pull off. So you'd like, and also doing anything really slow. The uh, the signature guitar here, there's going to be a few hundred made, a couple hundred. So I don't know if that's limited or not. I guess that's pretty limited. 
Um, Brian Gara, thank you. A couple hundred, that's limited, I guess. But I think if, uh, if I did a couple hundred and they sold out pretty strongly, then maybe I could, you know, could develop a second round of them or a second one. Um, my live stuff, I'm having to play an SG now uh, because of my neck from playing many years with a strap around my the left side of my neck and my shoulder like that. I've been getting neck pain with the 335 standing with the strap. So for live standing with the strap, I've switched to an SG and it's been pretty nice. It's real light. Still gives me that playability and humbucker kind of vibe. Um, thanks, guys. Uh, I don't have a favorite song to play. That was a question. What's my favorite song to play? I don't really have one. It always changes, but having, f uh, I mean, I definitely like playing, um, I definitely like playing. Right, guys i'm gonna get out of here thank you so much for your support uh tomorrow will be a riff theory uh don't forget my free pentatonic course the link will be in the comments and description etc thanks for finding me and we'll see you again take care everyone